good morning students welcome to this e class of bnd government arts college chimanpura i am dr ekta goswami and in this class of ba part 3 paper 1 we will take up for discussion ts eliot's poem preludes prelude is a very significant modern poem if we uh, take up the title of the poem a prelude before the play is a brief musical composition that is played before the main piece elliot he was fond of musical titles for his poem as in the later poem he had titled four quartets this poem was written by elliot when he was in his early 20s and prelude is preludes is about the monotony drudgery waste and isolation of modern urban life Eliot is one of the major poet of modern poetry. He points out in his poetry the industrial city dwellers, the modern era which has uprooted the people from their cultural roots. The city dwellers lead a dull, monotonous and fatigued life. Eliot published them with this long poems of the same theme and the poem preludes which is divided into four short sections are like an introduction to his later longer poems preludes is a chain of four short poems composed by ts eliot which got published in the collection prefolk and other observations in 1917 they were written quite early but then later it got published in 1917 prelude in its four parts is a complex narrative on the dark and depressing nature of city life and the state of human soul which is in degradation each of the part within preludes relates the routines taking place in the modern city at a specified time of the day first the evening then the morning then the night and finally the afternoon so together these four parts are a sort of introduction to the monotony drudgery waste and isolation of modern urban life the unnamed city in the poem is a dingy dark grim desolate place where the people are engaged in routine activities so eliot in his poems is always talking about urban society and in this poem also he is trying to bring forth the drudgery the monotony and the ugly aspects of the industrial city and how the people pre preparing for the routine activities in this kind of city in the industrial city act as a prelude to the main act of work and how it is affecting human life in general so before discussing the poem let's take the poem first in part first of preludes the poet says the winter evening settles down with smell of steaks in passage ways 6 o'clock the burnt out ants of smoky days and now a gusty shower wraps the grimy scraps of withered leaves about your feet and newspaper from vacant lots the showers beat on broken blinds and chimney pots and at the corner of the street a lonely cab horse steams and stamps and then the lightning of the lamps so the first prelude if you actually look at the time this is set on a winter evening in a city and the time of day is the evening time and in their routine life the people they are returning back from their work and this is the time of the evening and the rain storm is there so if you look at the place the gusty shower 
because of the raindrops that are falling, the grimy scraps because of the dirt that is on the ground, the withered leaves which are striking the feet of the person and newspaper which is actually coming from the vacant lots. So, it is dirt, it is a lonely place and the poet is trying to describe the waste that is there on the ground and along with the rain, along with the shower, along with the water, this waste gets gathered. Now, look at the objects that are actually displayed in the first part of the preludes. Newspapers, discarded and broken objects, the street and all of them, they are coming from vacant lots. Now, the poem begins by describing the routine activities of the people means cooking dinner, lightning of gas powered street lamps and in these repetitive activities means people they do not have time to look at the regenerative power or to look at the productive aspect of rain. So, it is only the cab horse who is the alone character who is the lonely character who is steaming and who is stamping the ground when he is trying to find the rain. So, the routine activities they just refer to the images of desolation and depersonal, uh, depersonalization and illit he is stressing the control that the clock based activities means 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock is the time when the routine activity of the work that is uh, actually referred to uh, through the people coming back to their houses means it is over, the routine activity of the working place it is now over and each of the persons they are coming out of their working places. So, the city or the routine or the life that is described in part first of the prelude is presented as a dirty, isolated place and there are grimy scraps of withered leaves blowing around, newspapers which are thrown to the ground and striking the feet of the people, broken blinds, chimney pots and the entire day is coming to an end like the end of the burnt out, burnt out cigarette. So, the steak, smoke, it all actually refers to the waste and decay of modern urban society. In the second part of preludes, the poet says, the morning comes to consciousness of faint stale smells of beer from the sawdust trampled street with all its muddy feet that press to early coffee stands. With the other mas masquerades that time resumes, one thinks of all the hands that are raising dinghy shades in a thousand furnished rooms. So, the second preludes refers to the time of morning and in the morning, it is not the incense which is burning from the temple or from the houses or the fresh breeze that is coming. How does it come into conscious, uh, consciousness with the faint smells of beer? So, the idea of drab, dullness and dirt which is presented in part first of the poem continues to the second part of the poem and it refers to the morning routine. So, the smell of steak now is turned to the smell of beer. From the sawdust trampled street and the muddy feet, all of them, they are moving towards the coffee stand. So, the lightning of the lamps in the street and people raising dinghy shades to illuminate or to lighten the room, all these echo the stress of the speaker 
or the voice of the speaker giving an idea that the people they are quite stressed and they are quite suffocated in the modern urban society so city dwellers they are quite reduced to symbols means they are just referred to in their physicality the feet and hands which are moving repetitiously and they act as if they are in the part of a play they do not have any individuality they are just moving their parts their body parts as if they are doing an act in a play and their lives they are just the same so the human uh, beings which are actually referred to in this part of preludes they do not have any emotion any identity any agency and the environment which is actually referred to is personified so human beings they do not have personal traits but it is the environment which has the traits of human life so evening is settling down morning is coming to consciousness and the emotions that could have been there in the human beings they have been drained and they have been transferred or means they have been given to the surrounding rather than to the humans which have been reduced to dingy shades and are contained in thousand furnished rooms and with the same identity with the same routine each and every human being they carry on their work daily in these urban society so the first prelude takes place in the evening time the second prelude talks about the morning time and in the third prelude the time is night So in the third prelude the poet says you tossed a blanket from the bed you lay upon your back and waited you dozed and watched the night revealing the thousand sordid images of which your soul was constituted they flickered against the ceiling and when all the word came back and the light crept up between the shutters and you heard the sparrows in the gutter you had such a vision of the street as the street hardly understands sitting along the bed's edge where you curled the papers from your hair or clasped the yellow soles of feet in the palms of both soiled hands so in the third prelude a character is introduced to whom speaker is addressing directly in the second person you so you tossed a blanket from the bed you lay upon your back and you waited so it draws the reader into the experience of this life of the character so it has been interpreted as a character who is addressed as lying awake at night thinking of a debased life and at the early morning time she is experiencing a consciousness of the word as she is preparing for her day so in this description the poet is basically talking about a subject who is sitting in a bed perhaps with sexual connotations and lying on the back as the character has been compared to the street so it is actually revealing the dirty life of the sordid debased women and it echoes the thousand furnace rooms which was referred to in the second part of prelude and the sordid images that are striking the character they are actually giving a sequence of 
perception to the women or to this particular character who is having the impression of the sparrows in the gutter or means she has a kind of suppression or she has a kind of suffocation like the street which is trampled again and again and while sitting at the bed's edge this woman or this character does not understand as the street hardly understands why it is being trampled so the word appears to this woman as bleak as her soul and there's a complexity which gives her a vision means the complex life which she is leading because of poverty because of her degrading condition because of her low economic background this woman has the consciousness to understand a vision of the street and the word and with that consciousness she starts to get ready for a day getting her makeup done removing the papers from her hairs which were used as a chief way to get a curl so at the backdrop you can get the image that uh, means the women she belongs to a low economic background and this is how the city life the industrial uh, civilization or industrialization has led to class divide and the poor person how they have to lead their lives to get them moving into this world so the papers also echo the newspapers which were there in the beginning of the preludes in the first stanza and now it does not refer to the feet it refers to the hair of the character so yellow soles of the feet again refers to poverty it can be the yellow soul the yellow souls can also be of the male customer so persistent motive of feet and hands and yellow and soiled they describe the working class poor people which forced them to survive by doing the dirty works for which their conscience or their soul it does not approve but still for the sake of survival they have to do these work so there's also a sympathetic gesture when the women while she's sit sitting alone she is trying to think about her life and she's trying to have various visions when she is comparing her life to the street to the sparrows to the nightingale so the poet is basically talking about the so the poet is basically referring to the decaying atmosphere of the city and the loss of human values and the loss of human emotions in a society where people they are quite busy in their routines and in their daily work which they are doing for their survival the conscience or the soul or the realizations they do not have any place in the lives of these person so religion spirituality which gives meaning to life these people they do not think about it the decaying atmosphere of the city is therefore a moral sin to which the poet is referring through the various pieces of preludes and people they are going through the same motions in this industrialized world day after day whether they are opening the blinds getting coffee trudging off to work or uh, means the women of the lower strata of society how uh, means they are doing the drudging sordid work to survive themselves in this world 
without really thinking about what they are doing so in this way city is alienating each and every human being who seem to be a crowd who seem to be a group but they are alienated from one another that is they are quite busy with their individuality in finding their wants needs and desires in section 4 of preludes the poet says his soul stressed tight across the skies that fade behind a city block or trampled by insistent feet at 4 and 5 and 6 o'clock and short square fingers stuffing pipes and evening newspapers and eyes assured of certain certainties the conscience of a blackened street impatient to assume the word i am moved by fancies that are curled around these images and cling the notion of some infinitely gentle infinitely suffering thing wipe your hand across your mouth and laugh the word the words revolve like ancient women gathering fuel in vacant lots so this fourth prelude it introduces us to the concept of soul or to the realization of consciousness of human being so the poem returns to the evening routine of the working classes the 4 and 5 and 6 o'clock now the poet is talking that whether it is 4 o'clock whether it is 5 o'clock whether it is 6 o'clock it is the same routine and what kind of characters are these urban people the people who are residing in the industrialized world they are short square figures stuffing pipes and again evening newspapers in their hands and eyes assured of certain certainties because they follow the same routine which is bound by the clock going to the working place returning back at the specified time and then the routine which has been described in the first three parts of the prelude they are quite certain so they are quite there with particular gestures with certain gestures for which they are quite certain but as far as their spiritual life is concerned there's a big void so prelude 4 now introduces to a male character in the third person also with a soul and the poem has returned to the evening 4 5 and 6 o'clock and they are all continuing the speaker's voice of alienation or the dirt and drab that is there in this life so people who are returning home after work they are too busy with the newspapers in their hand they do not have time to pause and notice the other persons who are walking along with them so they are quite lonely they are quite desolate in this crowd and in the first three preludes the time was certain but in the fourth prelude the poet haphazardly refers to them as 4 5 and 6 o'clock means whether it is 4 o'clock 5 o'clock 6 o'clock it is the same routine it has been multiplied so the life of industrialized society is quite certain with its certainties with their fixed routine and the insistent feet the short square figures the eyes they are all symbols of the kind of life that people lead in industrialized society as masses as crowd in their uniform activities
so uh, the blackened street trampled by insistent feet and infinitely suffering things so from his it is now the subjective element that has been referred to in this part so the voice changes to first person perspective and the speaker is saying that i am moved and this makes the observation subjective the poet is or the speaker or the protagonist is experiencing the same emotions or he is trying to empathize with a lot of the people in the industrialized world and in these images the poet is basically fantasizing he is basically imagining about something and his imagination is a form of a fancy about an infinitely gentle infinitely suffering things the suffering things are the suffering images the suffering people which he has referred to in the first three parts of the prelude so the speaker's written to religious illusions and he is actually referring to infinitely suffering thing by referring to the gentleness and the suffering of jesus christ so the parallelism that has been drawn in this moment elliot he expresses a desire that it is only spirituality it is only religion to which human beings they have to draw themselves then only they their life it can be regenerated so elliot he has experienced the visions of city and by observing these lives in part first second third part of the prelude he thinks about the suffering the infinite suffering and he says wipe your hand across your mouth and laugh the word revolved like ancient women gathering fuel in vacant lots so he is saying that means the word is revolving like an ancient women the women in the story who was gathering fuel in the lot in the vessel which is vacant so all these activities which the human beings they are continuing in their modern urban life are the useless activities are the revolving activities which do not have any end in the world so this meaningless cycle of life and death this meaningless existence with the same dull drab monotonous routine can be broken only by by drawing oneself towards spirituality so the poet is saying that the city life the industrialized life which is a life full of suffering and which lacks emotion and which, which is distancing itself from the meaning that human life should attain is quite meaningless and it is revolving like the ancient women who is trying to gather fuel in an empty vessel which has which is which always remain vacant because it has hole into it so the poet is alluding to christ position and when he is referring to the soul of the women when he is thinking about the women he is introducing a, a feeling of discomfort and why is uh, introducing a feeling of discomfort because the un so the poet while alluding to jesus christ is actually 
doubting upon a possibility by thinking about the spiritual regeneration of people whether it is possible in such a society or not so uh, by drawing a comparison between city routines and city life he thinks about their dull drab dreary routine and no efforts from these people to uplift their soul or uh, means to try anything to build up their spirituality so he thinks that the modern life with its cyclical and uh, with its same dull drab pattern is like the ancient women revolving round and gathering fuel and left with nothing in her hands so he thinks that such kind of life in which people they do not think about their soul they do not think about their spirituality would lead us nowhere the poem is basically considered to be the condemnation of modernity of urban life and the life in an industrial society so it mainly refers to the boredom of life and the life of the industrial society in which the class divide and the division of people it led to the kind of characters which were leading their lives for their survival in a very grim in a very dull in a very drab and a very suffocating scenario so by referring to the people the workers who are coming out of Uh, their factories or industries in the evening to the prostitutes who are actually exchanging their bodies to get survival for themselves and the other grim scenes they enhance the disorienting and dissatisfying nature of the modern world so the prelude appear to be a faithful representation of urban life and the poem appears to be the objective and detest attitude of the speaker but all through the four episodes of preludes all through the four parts of preludes it is the perception it is the perspective of the speaker who seems to be dissatisfied with the modern way of life of the word so eliot thinks that this kind of life it is not satisfying and it will always involve dreariness in the lives of human beings on this earth if they do not do anything for their spiritual upliftment like many modernist writer eliot referred or he expressed the psychological state of humanity in the 20th century post industrialization so the passing of victorian idols the trauma of world war first it basically challenged the cultural heritage the civilized notions of nations and with the new thinking of individualism creeping up and people they were becoming more and more self centered the poem actually refers to the paralyzed and wounded society which ts eliot questions in this particular poem